Hello, this is Jan from Red Toad Art Studio, and today we are going to draw something different. We have had several videos on how to draw flowers, and there's something missing in these pictures. It's butterflies, or bees, or other little insects. So today we are going to learn how to draw a bee. And if you would like to download our free tutorial, it's on our website at redtoadartstudio.com. These are free, and these are step-by-step -step drawing tutorials. So, there are a few other things you will want. Obviously, a piece of paper. Now, I have watercolor paper because I'm going to watercolor my bee when I finish drawing it. You will need a pencil, an eraser, a permanent marker, paintbrush. My favorite paintbrush right now is a number five, my artscape. A ruler to draw our frame. A little test piece of paper. Some tape when we come to uh, painting our picture. My little spritzer bottle here to uh, activate my paints. Obviously, my paint, and again, I'm just going to use some Crayola. You can use whatever kind of paint you have on hand. We do need some water if we're water coloring. Now, you may be using markers or colored pencils or crayons, so adjust your materials accordingly. And then I do have a clipboard to tape my uh, paper down on when I start to paint. I think... That is about it. The first thing I want to do is draw a frame on my paper. And I love this rough textured side of my watercolor paper. There are two different textures. This is smooth and this is rough. And the brand of watercolor paper you buy will make a difference in that. So let's get our frame drawn in. All right, let's get our set of instructions out. And like most of our instructions, we start out with a circle. And then we add shapes to it. And if you do this for everything you draw, when you look at an item to draw, see what shapes you can see to put down first. We're going to put a circle down, which is this part of the bee's body the part that has the legs and the wings coming off of it. And it's not real obvious that there's a circle there until you look at a bee from several different angles. Now this bee, depending on how fat we make it, how long we make these items, what color, this could be um, a honeybee, a bumblebee, a hornet, a wasp. You can change this slightly to get all different kinds of um, flying, stinging insects. But we're going to do this little guy right here. Our circle should be about the size of a quarter. And I'm going to bring it down so I have room for wings up here and legs down here. And we need a head with antenna over here. So I'm going to put my circle about here and it's going to be about the size of a quarter. Now just draw these lightly. We're just uh, laying down the first lines and many of these will be erased. Now, for a head, let's do an oval. The oval should be smaller than this circle. An oval right here. This is for his head. You see that? Now, these first two steps are simple and really most of these steps are simple. Although the bee really looks hard. Now we want to do kind of a, a big oval that's a slightly like bean shaped. And it does need to touch this area right here. Now on a bumblebee, this will be a lot bigger and fatter than say on a honeybee. Or on a wasp, this will be very thin. So an oval, just like that. See how that is? 
Now, we could do this. Once you've done this several times, you won't need to add this step. You'll just do it at the beginning. Make this oval um, kind of pointed at the bottom, like that. That's where the stinger is. Hey, and we can go ahead and add a stinger right now. How about that? And this, the head is a little pointed at the end where, well, I don't know the technical names, but where the bees, is it a proboscis, mouth, whatever you want to call it, is. See, now we already have the basic shape of our bee. That puts us here at step four. Then we came along and erased these extra lines and added a wing. Let's get our erasers out. I'm going to go ahead and erase this line right here. Sometimes it's a lot easier to get rid of these extra lines as you can, and it clears up your picture a lot. And one comes off right there. All right. So the wing, the wing comes off of this section. The wing and all of the legs come off of this section. Now, do you notice? I want to smooth this out a little bit right here. That bothers me. <laughs> Now, as I smooth it out, obviously, I left some area here that I'm going to erase. This will all get erased later if you want to wait when after we ink it and erase. Now, I didn't leave a whole lot of room for my wing here, so we're just going to fit that wing in. Now, bees actually have four wings. They have two sets on each side. But they are so close together, they look like they're one wing that has two sections like this. See, one wing would be here, and one wing would be here. If they spread them just right, you can see that there's two wings. But they usually just look like one wing. So this is the wing coming from here. And then the wing on the other side will just show up a little bit just like this. See that? Now these are kind of small wings because I put my bug too far up. Do you think I could get this a little longer? We can try if we can get it a little longer. That might look a little better. There we go. You get the idea. You can make these wings as long as you want. After all, this is your little bee. All right, now let's come in and put some stripes. Now that will differ according to the insect you're drawing. But most bumblebees have a couple of yellow stripes on the back end of their bodies. I'm going to make space here for that. And these will be yellow right there. And they usually also have a yellow stripe right in here. Right here. Can you see that? Okay, now our instructions have us working a little bit on the wings. Okay, if you're a beginner at drawing and feel uncomfortable with the veins, I don't know what you call them, I guess it's like a leaf. These wings have veins that look like what a leaf would have. And you could draw them in just the same way if you want. Now, they're pretty complicated on a real wing. But let's put a line down the center of each one of the wings that shows. See that, a line? If you want to stop at a simple spot, just make some lines out from that center line just like you would on a leaf and that's really enough for your drawing now if you would like to make it more realistic we can add a few more lines on these wing lines by by dividing some of these lines as it comes out if you look at a little pair of wings if you find a bee that's a that you can either handle or that is dead.
take a look at those wings and they're very complicated so however you make these will look pretty good and I do like adding those little extra lines in there just wherever you feel like it there we go there's our wings we are ready to go to the second page of our instructions right here and what we're going to do is add a big old eye they have huge eyes so let's come along here and add a big eye now when you color this in you are going to want to have some big white areas that are um, shining in the light so I'm going to remind myself by drawing a little like a beanie shape in that eye now to me the hardest part is coming up and that's getting the legs in and they have at least four segments in each leg there is the spot that hooks in and let's do the seed the front legs come very close to their heads here and there be a section where it hooks in do you see that there and then there'll be two more sections and they just kind of like hook into each other and then the very last section is very skinny and has like an upside down V on the bottom and little V's up and down like little hairs on that leg. Can you see those? Do you see how this is in sections? One section hooks in, two coming out. They come out of each other like that and then there is a thin section with little hairs on it we have a set of legs at the front now because the head is here you will not see where the other one attaches in but you'll most likely see it on the other side of the head so just add that in there there we go now the other two legs will kind of if they're if they're flying and this one is will kind of swing back as they're zooming through the air their legs kind of swing back and there'll be two legs here the biggest one comes right next to this part of the body so it's a little bit bigger than these and the way I kind of understood it when I looked this up they have a part of this leg that gathers the pollen so it's a fatter leg than these and it kind of swings back when they fly see that put those little hairs there so one more leg here and it fits right in here now in all honesty you will see the other side you'll see some of the other legs when you're looking at a bee but this is very crowded and I just don't bother to draw them in our eyes just kind of fill that in without us drawing it in we have the hardest part of our bee done all right look we pretty much have our bee already let's see what have we not done ah we've got to give that bee its antenna the antenna come out like between the eyes believe it or not we tend to want to put antenna on top of a bug's head but these come out between the bug's eyes and then there's kind of a kind of a bend here and the second part of the antenna is fatter and then there's a little round thing on the end so let's just go ahead and put this back one showing up there and I'd say basically we have this B already drawn now and ready to ink Now when we ink, we will ink the frame and we'll ink all this. Now let me give you a hint before you start inking because you may feel like you can uh, skip this section watching. Bees are fuzzy. Now I drew these lines fairly smooth. But when you draw these lines, do them jagged like fur. They're fuzzy. You see how I'm doing that? 
I didn't do that with my pencil because that would have been hard to have followed inking it anyway. So we do this part just with our ink pen. And all these spots where it would be fuzzy, we do jagged little ends. See that? Make it look fuzzy. And this part of their body's fuzzy too. And I'm also going to fuzz this part, going into this part, all around this area. Clear down to this area. And then here underneath their, well, I'm not sure if their tummies are here or if their tummies are there. You know, you can go online and find diagrams of what a bee looks like on, ins on the inside. And they're very interesting. So, now I am going to draw this a little smoother. We'll give him a good little stinger there. Little fuzz here, but the head is smooth. Remember, we need to leave a good little bit of white area for the gleam in their eye. And they have quite a gleam if you look at pictures of them. There we go. The antenna here. So how are you feeling about your bug? I think they're cute. Of course, I'm not one of these people that's scared of bees or flying bugs. Although, I have had an occasional wasp sting me. And as a child, when I ran around barefooted all the time, I would have some honeybee stings. But I still like them. Get these legs in here. Now, these two are a little short. I'm going to draw mine a little longer. You know, that's one thing you can do with your ink part, is fix any mistakes you don't like. The pencil can always be erased. We just have our wings. Alright, I have my B ink. I need to do my frame next. If you notice right here, I just let my wing go over my frame. This is my frame. Sometimes it looks pretty neat to have things go over the edge. Now we've inked it. Let's erase any stray pencil lines. Our picture is ready to finish now. You may have a different method. You may want to use your markers or just leave it as it is. Use color crayon, whatever you want to do. I am going to watercolor it. So if you would like to watercolor yours, just paint along with me here. First, we're going to tape our picture down. And if you're like me and you use a clipboard, 
depending on whether you're right-handed or left-handed, it's nice to situate this the opposite of your dominant hand. I'm right-handed, so I put this to the left. Otherwise, I'm always running into it. If you're left-handed, just do the opposite. There we go. Now we need to tape it down. This seems like an unnecessary step sometimes, but if you get into the middle of your watercolor and everything starts to buckle and wrinkle and make little mountains and valleys, you'll wish you had taped it then. And then is a point where it's a little hard to tape it sometimes. It's already done its thing. And I know, I'm a forgetful grandma, and sometimes I have forgotten the steps. I get so anxious to paint that I forget to tape it down. And then I regret it. Now, I will pull this tape up a little bit over my wing so I can paint that wing. There we go. So let's get ready to paint. We need to get our paint ready. So let's set this aside. I'm getting my good old Crayola watercolors. You get whatever you have. Any watercolors will work. And we need to activate some of our paint. I need to activate yellow because there's a lot of yellow on a bee. I'm just going to activate both of these and then I'll kind of decide when the time comes. And then I am going to do some background of a super light green behind my bee. So I'm going to activate the light green, the medium green. Now the legs and wings will have a brownish tint to them, so I need to activate my brown. And I'm not sure about the black. I cannot get my black to work real well in this set. It is more of a Payne's Gray, I believe, and to get a really intense black is hard. So I'm not sure if I use that. I may just use my permanent marker to make blacks on my bee. So let's mix a couple of colors. I want to use a yellow with a touch of orange in it just to darken it a bit. So let's mix some yellow here. And this is just for the yellow stripes on the bee, yeah. And I don't know if you've noticed, one of these yellows is much darker than the other one. And I'm about to run out. <laughs> All right, let's get some yellow. Now let's just use one dip of orange. And you know, I didn't activate my orange. Let's do that. Let's see if we can get some orange here. Get some of that yellow out of there. And let's test this color and see what we have. Oh, yes, I like that. That'll do just great for the bee's body. Yes. What we're going to do is lay this down and then dab a little orange straight into it to give it a little bit of texture. Let's see. The other color we will need is a lighter brown for the wings and kind of a brown color for the legs. Let's mix our wing color and our light brown. We'll do that right here. You notice I mix colors for the uh, base color and then when I want it darker as a shadow I can go straight into the pan and get a darker color. Now I want to add yellow to this brown and lighten it up and make more of a dark cream. There, we got a lot in there. Good. And you know, when you're looking at this petal of paint here, it's hard to tell what it's really going to look like until you test it out. That will work just fine. So, we have yellow, and we'll use orange in that. We have a light brown, and we'll add dark brown to that. We have some black mixed if we need it. And we have our greens. Ah, yes, let's mix our background green while we're here. 
we want a very light background green and I mean very light so it doesn't take away from the way the bee looks a little bit of this lightest green into this see now how bright that is now I don't like the brightness of that Let's add a little bit of this yellow. And a touch of the dark green. Let's see if we can get some of that that I didn't activate in here. Let's see what we have as a background. That may be too intense. We want a very light background. Nah, look at that. Let's darken it up just a little bit more, in fact. We could also add a little bit of brown to that if we wanted to. You fiddle with that until it's what you want. That's pretty good right there. All right. I think we're ready to paint. All right, we're ready to go. I have moved the paint over to my side here so you can see the bee as we paint. The first thing we're going to do is decide whether we want to use paint on the the bees black <laughs> or markers and I'll be honest I think I'm going to use markers I'm going to get me a flare sharpie fine point I did a bee before this bee and I did it with paint but I wasn't real happy with it because to get a good black in your um, Crayola it's just hard to do in it it's the one color I, I haven't figured out how a good way to use it is yet. And you can get such a good black with your markers. So let's use the marker for our black here. All right, now let's get our paint out and start with the yellow that we mixed to do our yellow stripes with. So I'm just going to get my brush wet, have my paper on hand here, and dip into my very watery <laughs> diluted yellow up here that we mixed. And paint in our yellow stripes. Now, while this is wet, I'm going to drop a little bit of orange into that. So dab my brush off and go into the orange, the pan, and just get little bits of orange to kind of dip into this yellow. And let the paint do its own thing. It will spread as long as you do this while it's nice and wet. There we go. And we'll do that with this section and this section. So wipe your brush off into the water and into your yellow paint and do this section. Now if you decide you like it better without the orange, this is your bee. You could just stop right here at the bright yellow, which is neat looking too. Now I'm going into my orange and get a little bit of this for a textured look. And we need to do the yellow right up here. There's not much to paint on a bee, to be actually honest here. Let's get this little spot. And a dab of orange up in here. I think what I'm going to do is do the wings next. And I am going to do the wings with this light brown that we mixed up and then with a dab of dark brown for shadows. Wings are transparent, so it's like being very unsure how 
to color them or paint them. So you can experiment with different colors until you find one you like. But in looking at wings, they seem to be like a very light golden brown. While they're wet, I'm going to dip into my dark brown and add shadows. Now this will be dark because it's down at the base and a little bit of the body is behind it. And then maybe just kind of some at the tip. And then a little bit of dabs just down on through it. And there's our wings. That was easy, wasn't it? Okay. Now we need to do the legs. You could do the legs either the dark brown or Payne's gray. Now that would be up to you. Let's see if we can get rid of this little spot right here. I'm going to do the legs brown right out of the pan just like this Now this spot, if your yellow is still wet, you'll want to wait and let it dry before you do that last segment up there. Now the head. Again, we could do that Payne's gray or brown. I think I'll stay with the brown. Now the only part of the B I haven't painted is this one segment. I'm going to see if I can get by with it and paint it. We'll find out, won't we? Good enough. Now, let's put a little bit of a background in it after I fix that. I must have gotten some water off on that edge, and it's wanting to um, go that way. Let's see if we can clean it up at all. You remember to fix a mistake like that, clean your brush, get it damp, and try to mop up that color. Now when we put our background in it will help to get rid of that too. Alright, have we got it stopped? Now we need to let this dry before we put the background in. So I'd say 15-20 minutes, up to overnight even. To let this dry so this is going to set here for a few minutes and I'll be back to finish this off okay it's been about 10 minutes and I'm going to see if I can get my background green in now I would advise you to wait a little bit longer than 10 minutes but um, I think the hardest part about watercolor is the waiting as long as you should so let's start out with a clean brush Get some of that green you mixed up for the background, and we're just going to dab it on. Now, we're not going to worry about going edge to edge. We're just going to put some green in the background so it's not a solid white. Now, come as close to the bee as you can without overlapping. But don't get too paranoid about it. Sometimes we can do too much in the background and it becomes a distraction. And all we want today is for our B to be the uh, center of our attention. Now I had trouble here with this brown and I'm going to see if I can kind of cover it up with my green.
Alrighty, come around here. Just work quickly. This could go quicker if you even had a bigger brush, but. Let's come up here. You could do a blue background for sky if you wanted. But since bees usually are hanging around green vegetation of some sort, I like the looks of the green. I like yellow backgrounds, but since he has a lot of yellow on him, I thought maybe the green would show him up better. Now, this little bee, he's not little, is he? When you draw him for another picture and put him in with a flower, you'll probably want to draw him a lot smaller. And you might want to eliminate some of the details even because he'll be so small. There we go. We have finished our bee. And I hope you put him in a lot of pretty flower pictures. In fact, we'll try to do one, one of our next videos. A pretty flower picture with our bee in it. Now, don't forget to clean your brush. Put the point back on after you've cleaned it. And let's sign our picture. All right, I would suggest you leave the tape on until your background dries and then take the tape off and you are done. And here is our finished picture of our bee. I hope you've enjoyed drawing a flying stinging insect because these will be very cute in your pictures. So I will be seeing you in our next video. So Bye-bye for now.